Good afternoon. I would like to uh, take you through the project. Uh, this project was how, in an innovative way, uh, we used existing technology uh, and adapted it and tailored it in order to create more inclusive employment. The project was conducted in the social economy environment, but the conclusions are valid for the regular economy as well. Give you an example. This is Ellen. She worked in our sheltered workshop. This is uh, a place for people with mental disabilities. She has a light mental handicap, so therefore reading, writing, counting, this is very difficult for her. And she's insecure, although she's, she is handy. She cannot handle complex situations, so therefore she gets uh, easy jobs done, easy routine, and only a few process steps, like this packing of the small pet accessories. But this is Judy. Judy also works in our uh, sheltered workshop, but she's in another department, the assembly department. And Judy is assembling these steps which are used for um, mobile homes and caravans. And this kind of complex assembly is done by Judy all by herself. It consists of 51 consecutive steps. But this is not a problem for Judy. Even with her disability of autistic spectrum disorder, she can do this because she remembers the project steps she has to do. She's a kind of Lego master, you could say. Ellen, however, dreams of working together with her old schoolmate, uh, Judy. But her supervisor has told her to give up her dream. Why? Because she will never master this kind of complex assembly. Sheltered workshops as us, we just have to tackle and make sure that this kind of jobs really are accessible. So we imagine there is technology who can be used to close the gap. We tried off-the-shelf technology, but it didn't help. Why? Because the user interfaces were not fit for Ellen. It is complex to use keyboards, uh, multi-layered menu structures, and so on. So meet Dave. Dave was the innovation engineer we could hire with the project. He helped us uh, to develop an assembly supporting tool. So he was really the engineering power we lacked in our uh, facility. Trial and error led to this kind of assembly support tool. And uh, Ellen now can visualize the production steps one by one by pushing the green button. If she feels insecure, she doesn't know what to do, she just pushes the blue button and a video tutorial starts. This was a surprise to her new supervisor. Her new supervisor um, never believed also that she could do this, but she, could, she can, and even in the same production time as uh, Judy does. In fact, the digital work instruction trained Ellen, and the effort of the supervisor was kept to a minimum. This was only one example, but the project contained all 24 regional social economy initiatives. Dave uh, was uh, executing on-the-floor implementations in almost all of them. So he boosted our innovation spirit and knowledge sharing through living labs, co-creation sessions, best practices. So it was knowledge sharing, copy, adapt, paste. We worked out 30 practical cases and uh, we went over from rapid prototyping and making assistive tools in 3D printing. We adapted the workplaces with cobots and light guide systems we experimented with e-learning modules. We adapted um, Andon systems for self-supporting teams. All these kind of things were done in the project. But Ellen is only one example. There are many like Ellen on every shop floor. So to adopt technology in an inclusive way can boost the inclusive employment. So we spread the word. We as sheltered workshops are more or less pioneers in what we call inclusive human-centered production. So we gathered more than 400 entrepreneurs and stakeholders 
in our closing event of the project in order to encourage them to take up the challenge. The challenge is create more inclusive employment. All Ellens should have the possibility to realize their dreams. So the project contributed and learned us also how we have to tackle this kind of problems in a practical way. So we have learned this and we continue to do so. Thank you.